Hello YouTube, Ready Reptiles here with another video and in today's video we are in a different setting. We are in my bedroom and the reason being is because I'm going to be talking to you guys about the anatomy of turtles and tortoises. I um, might not go into too much depth in this video but I'm just going to show you guys an overall view. I have a shell of a dead red cheek mud turtle that just died of natural causes. Uh, so I was able to acquire the shell from a friend of mine. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of information about that and I'll also be talking and giving you guys some information from this book which is called Turtles of the World. Uh, it's been written by three authors and it's just been translated uh, uh, a few years ago actually by Dr. Uh, Peter Pritchard. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll read a little bit about this because some of the information still holds true of course and I'll show you guys the turtles. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed today's video and let's get started. All right guys, so uh, this animal right here uh, was a red cheek mud turtle. I'll throw a picture on the bottom left corner of the screen so you guys can see this animal uh, when it was alive. Uh, this animal specifically uh, was in a large group that I believe was confiscated from Nicaragua who uh, they were being illegally imported into our country. Uh, the zoo got them and then the zoo sent them to a friend of mine who is a very uh, reputable biologist and also a private keeper of turtles and tortoises. So this animal died in captivity. Obviously, that happens. Uh, animals come and go. They pass away. Uh, you know, it's just part of life in general. Uh, so now this turtle is going to be used for education. Uh, I was gifted the shell for my friend. And now I'm able to bring some really cool videos with you guys. Uh, and just show you guys in detail the insides of a turtle. Obviously, I can't show you guys the organs. I don't have certain parts of the bone because the animal was a water turtle uh, and it passed away inside the water. So a lot of that just kind of disintegrates and, uh, you know, dematerializes over time. But uh, we do have a few components of it left and it's very cool. Uh, we do have an intact shell, basically. So this right here is the shell of the turtle. Uh, and you can see uh, just a kind of 360 view. You want to be as delicate as possible. Uh, these scoots are still on top of the shell and you can kind of see the bone uh, structure of the actual turtle which I'll focus the camera in for you guys there you guys can see that and if we look on the inside uh, you can see this right here is the vertebrae of the actual turtle uh, so this is the spinal cord and it is adhered to the top of the shell uh, and for those that don't know uh, this is called the carapace so the top of the shell is the carapace the bottom is the plastron uh, and the vertebrates the backbone basically is adhered to the top of the carapace from the inside so uh, when people say uh, you know turtles tortoises can come out of the shell that is completely false these guys live 100% inside their shell and they are attached to it basically so uh, in the case of this mud turtle uh, being that it is a mud turtle for anybody who has uh, seen these guys or have kept uh, different species we have North American ones here uh, in Florida and throughout the United States. Uh, they have what is called a hinge. So this right here would be the hinge bone. Uh, and as you can see, it's also bone. It would be also covered in the scales, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. But this hinge would be right here or maybe in the back, depending on which side it came from. Uh, and this animal would be able to retract completely inside and protect itself from the front and from the back. Uh, and this part, uh, I'm sure, was part of the rear or one of the frontal uh, actual hinges. You can kind of see the porousness of it. Uh, very cool uh, little piece of bone here. But yeah, uh, this turtle uh, would have retracted inside through the use of the hinge. So kind of like a trapdoor system. And uh, I just wanted to share with you guys and show you guys the innards of a turtle shell. You can see that that vertebrae is attached. So when people say that your turtle is going to come out of the shell, you can say, hey, uh, my turtle, my tortoise actually lives and it's permanently inside its shell. So being that the shell is an outside of bone as well, uh, as the animal gets bigger, it grows, of course, depending on the species. This right here is a full grown size uh, mud turtle. Maybe they can get a little bit larger, uh, but it is pretty full of grown size. You can see compared to my hand, uh, it's, you know, very fairly large uh, turtle as well. So uh, so that's very cool to, uh, you know, just show you guys. Another thing you guys should understand is that the neck can be retracted uh, in a vertical plane to conceal the head under the carapace. So that includes eight vertebrae and is deployed by powerful muscles. So like I said, uh, when this animal wants to retract inside, uh, all eight vertebrae would go back in. This would close and you would not be able to get in or out, obviously, without extreme forces. This is something that they use in the wild. They can lodge themselves uh, between rock crevices, uh, specifically little creeks and streams and lakes. These guys would be found in uh, and that's just super cool. All right, guys, so I want to talk a little bit about the internal organs of a turtle and a tortoise. Uh, this is a very general biology. Obviously, there might be some specificalities between different species, different sizes, uh, you know, determine the size of the organ. Uh, obviously, you got to think of all those factors before we just discuss specifics. Uh, but for something like this mud turtle and for most turtles and tortoises, of course, uh, we have a very generalized idea of what's going on. 
Uh, the organs of a turtle, uh, for those that don't know, are not radically different from those of any other vertebrae, including ourselves. Uh, the only main difference I would say is that uh, for the most part, turtles and tortoises have free floating organs. Uh, so in the case of a turtle, uh, for example, this animal was alive and it got to flip itself over on its back. Uh, one, the lungs would be attached to the top of the uh, carapace, so from the inside of the carapace, uh, and they would be subject to serious injury if something were to puncture from above, or in the case that they were to flip themselves over for a long period of time, uh, all the organs would basically flop onto the lungs, uh, applying pressure onto the lungs, of course, making it harder for the turtle or tortoise to breathe. Uh, that's why we stress as captive keepers, uh, when you do own an animal in captivity, always make sure you're observing, uh, make sure that you have uh, a very nice habitat uh, for the animal so that it doesn't flip itself over, some shade spots like that, it doesn't cook in the sun. But in the case, if it did flip itself over, uh, you would see that the organs would basically put lots of pressure on the lungs and being that tortoises and turtles lack a diaphragm they do not have that muscle that is able to squeeze uh, making it easier for them to breathe and obviously push things out of their system uh, now when this would happen of course uh, the animal uh, would be able to uh, urinate so it would come out of what is called a cloaca uh, right here uh, and when it's you know excreting waste from its cloaca uh, obviously, it you know makes for a little bit more room within the intestines and uh, anywhere it would hold uh, water, such as the bladder. Uh, and in cases like that, of course, uh, the animal would you know maybe last a little bit longer. In the case of a wild animal being out there cooking itself or being flipped over for long periods of time. Uh, like I explained previously, uh, they're able to retract their neck 100% uh, into their body and their back legs. Uh, obviously, this one has a hinge, like I explained in the previous clip, uh, which is right here. Uh, but tortoises, obviously, uh, they can go inside their shell. Uh, obviously, not all the way in and disappear, but they're able to just kind of block themselves by using their front limbs as basically a protectant. Uh, the heart of a turtle and tortoise is very well protected, and it's under the anterior part of the plastron. So, like I said, plastron is right here. Uh, would be around right here so that means it's very well protected by this brony out structure and of course it would have a layer of scales uh, which would be the keratin material which we'll talk about here uh, and an, an optimal activity levels it beats about 30 times per minute so remember they are a cold-blooded species uh, they have to generate their own energy uh, through the use of a solar uh, system uh, well, not a solar system, but basically the sun. They need the sun uh, to warm themselves up. Uh, like that, they generate their own energy. Uh, the tortoises and turtles have lots of muscles and limbs, and that allows for retraction of these members uh, when the animal hides itself within its shell. Uh, specifically for the liver, uh, it's a very large and is located below the intestines. Uh, the intestines are especially long in herbivorous species. So that's why when I always say that the digestive tract of an animal, uh, like a tortoise, is very long. And that is because it is. So in the cases where it was a lot cooler, since they need to, uh, you know, rely on external sources for heat and create their own energy, uh, it takes even a lot longer during winter months for them to digest. That's why we don't feed as much when it does get cold. Uh, and their limbs are very thick and robust, allowing the turtle to lift its heavy shell. So obviously this animal isn't that big, uh, but in the case of a Sulcata or a Galapagos, uh, it would need very strong limbs, uh, limbs very elephantine-like. Uh, and that's just very cool for them to obviously prepare themselves up like that. All right, so now to discuss a little bit about, about these scoots and these scales that you see on top of this turtle. Obviously, we can see uh, down here, they are popping off because obviously this animal has been in the sun for a little bit, drying up, getting rid of that, you know, nasty decaying smell of a dead animal. But what's very vital and key to understand that this material is made out of keratin. Uh, and for keratin is, uh, for those that don't know, is the material of your fingernails and your hair. Oh, here's a nice little close-up shot of it. Uh, so this is basically the scoots and the scales of this mud turtle. Uh, it's all obviously a lot different in other species as well, uh, but it's also very, uh, you know, cool to understand that it's a very general material. Uh, so the bony shell, which we see here, uh, it's kind of protruding out here on this side. The bony shell is a calcified structure. It's covered within a thin layer of keratinous scales. So similar to our own fingernails, like I said, uh, this layer of keratin material serves as a physical defense against external threats. So uh, in the case if uh, this animal were to get burned, of course, uh, small injuries, uh, different microorganisms like bacteria, obviously, uh, you know, mosquitoes, things like that. Uh, this protects along with the bone uh, that is under. And it also serves in certain species as identification. So as we know with my radiated tortoises, you can easily identify that animal because of how beautiful and unique each shell uh, is to each individual animal as well. Uh, so, you know, those are some things that this keratin is, uh, you know, obviously vital for, for the actual species. Uh, but what's also uh, to note is that 
uh, like I explained in one of my recent videos with my radiator tortoises, that people poach these animals for their shell, quote unquote. And what they don't realize is they're just basically getting bone and fingernail, uh, which is keratin, uh, just which is the material of the scale that is, um, you know, made out of, it's composed of. Also, uh, they eat these animals traditionally, like I explained in another video about aphrodisiacs. Aphrodisiacs just gives a uh, heightened sexual arousal, supposedly people believe. Uh, and by quote unquote eating this for traditional medicine or for whatever properties it has, uh, other than what they think it has, uh, obviously does nothing for them. So you can see it's very fingernail-like, uh, very malleable in a sense. Uh, uh, not as hard, I would say, as our fingernail at the moment. But obviously, if you get a scoop from what a, a Sokata, a Galapagos, and Aldabra, a lot thicker, obviously bigger animal. But we can also see that the bone is kind of protruding out in the back, which is very cool uh, to see. And this material right here is bone as well. So this is basically what you would see as, like I said, the hinge previously. Uh, but this would also be covered in some of these scales. So here's a quick little idea. For example, you could see uh, this would kind of cover in this area or however uh, these came from the little lateral scoots on the bottom. So, yeah, besides that, uh, you know, the animal will have this large, you know, very, you know, keratin like, uh, you know, material over the shell. Uh, they'd use it for camouflage. Uh, the patterns are different from all, you know, turtles and tortoises. Uh, they they are more than likely similar to their environment. So this animal obviously is a mud turtle species. This color shell would do great in a bottom of a pond, bottom of a lake, a stream. It would wedge itself in there. You wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, so it blend in perfectly. So that's another purpose of the keratin like material or the scoots of the animal. Uh, it's different for all animals, like I explained. And of course, uh, you know, you have to just be particular to what you're getting. But if you do own a turtle and a tortoise, just know that their scales are made out of keratin. So in the book, Turtles of the World, they get this very beautiful diagram that we can see. Uh, you can kind of understand the insides of a tortoise and a turtle. Like I said, it's a very generalized biology. So uh, pretty much it'd be the same for all of the animals. Just keep in mind that the uh, maybe the size of the organs, the size of the turtle, the tortoise is different throughout each species, of course. Uh, so here we can see you got lungs. Uh, you got the heart, you got different bone structures, uh, intestines, livers, kidneys, uh, all these different things. Uh, and just very cool to see. So you can see here in a diagram form, we got the bone, uh, which is right here, the bone. Then on top, you have the keratin, the scales and scoots, the scales and scoots. On the inside, uh, we have the vertebrae, which is the spinal cord, the backbones attached to the top of the carapace. Uh, and that is right there. And just overall, it's very cool to see. Uh, for anybody wondering, this book you can get on Amazon. Like I said, Turtles of the World, uh, written by Frank Bonin, Bernard DeVu, and Alan Dupree. But it's recently been translating years ago by Peter C.H. Pritchard. Uh, these are all very uh, well-renowned known uh, biologists, herpetologists, animal people in general. Uh, just a very cool book. <clears throat> I got it on Amazon, for those that are wondering. Uh, I think it was around $50. But if we do scroll through it, you have several 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 pages of every turtle and tortoise uh known to man uh, and obviously if the animal is discovered after this it may not be in here but you can see we just saw some star tortoise there's a pancake tortoise we just passed another um, star tortoise there very cool tortoises turtles all sorts of things uh, maybe we can see the mud turtle here i'll try to find in one of these next clips but yeah uh so you guys saw that diagram so you kind of get a little bit of a you know more uh in paper view of what what i was explaining so it's a lot you know a better visual representation for you guys so like i was saying i found this specific uh, species in the book uh like i said it's a red cheek mud turtle also known as the scorpion mud turtle uh which is right here uh, if we look a little bit you can find the ranges where it comes from. So like I said, Central, uh, Mex you can find in Central America, Mexico, South America. This specific animal came from Nicaragua, like I explained. Uh, the common name, Scorpion Mud Turtle. Uh, just very cool that this book has this. Uh, you can read about the subspecies of it, natural history, protection. Uh, obviously, a little bit about the distribution, the description, uh, which I'll read for you guys. So for the name of this turtle, uh, Linnaeus was inspired by Latin Scorpio, uh, which refers to the stinger on the tail. Actually, just a uh, you know a conical spur on the tip of the tail. This is a turtle of medium size, male usually about 200 uh, millimeters and so on and so forth. If you want to read more about this, like I said, you can find this book on Amazon. Uh, but here's a musk turtle, uh, which is a stink pot. This is a North American species as well. You can see it ranges here uh, in Florida throughout the Northeastern United States. These are different other musk turtles and mud turtles. You can see a Sonoran mud turtle, uh, which is this one. 
uh, you know, Eastern mud turtle, which is this one and so on and so forth. So yeah, so another thing that I want to talk about before uh, we wrap up this video is that in the case of an external, uh, you know, fungal infection or some bacteria were to adhere to the top of the shell of this turtle, or specifically this turtle or a tortoise, uh, you can get things like shell rot. Uh, you can also get things like, uh, you know, different uh, bacteria and funguses that adhere to the top. Uh, the animal would be able to pop off its uh, scales, uh, obviously not willingly, but uh, the bacteria or whatever thing would uh, deteriorate it. Uh, just leaving this bony structure as protection so uh they have so much layers uh to cover in uh like i explained also uh you can see the anatomy of it is very very unique very cool uh, i also have uh, a sulcata tortoise female uh she passed away a few months ago uh, and a good friend of mine also who does taxidermy uh you know i commissioned him to prepare that female so i will have a large sulcata shell that i'll be able to share with you guys here soon uh, I also have uh, friends of mine who, you know, gave me this turtle, uh, him as well, the other guy that's going to, you know, do the Sokata shell for me. They have very large collections of uh, skulls, uh, different shells, different, you know, reptiles and things. So uh, that'd be very cool uh, for me to show you guys a whole video, just kind of just showing you guys different species. Obviously, every animal that I will show you here, uh, you know, for the most part has passed away naturally. Uh, we don't kill any animals. We do not uh, do anything, obviously, to harm the animal, of course. Uh, and it's just very uh, cool that I'm able to educate, you know, my major thing on this channel is to educate people. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out real quick, if the camera will pick it up, uh, you can kind of see, uh, very hard to see, but maybe better on this one, these porous kind of uh, things coming out between the uh, actual bone of the turtle, uh, uh, well, the bone actually, but uh, just very cool. Uh, you can see that they're uh, very micro structures within to keep a whole uh, overall, uh, you know, biology and anatomy of this animal. Another cool fact is that the vertebrae, uh, which is the backbone that you guys saw that is adhered to the top of the carapace and not the plastron, but the carapace uh, is uh, a very good way for this animal to anchor itself. Uh, it keeps a very good structure. Uh, everything is aligned. So uh, I just thought I would just, you know, come on here, make the little clip just to kind of, you know, guide you guys even further, show you guys that this animal passed away of natural causes. We don't know specifically what, but like I explained, uh, imports, they always come with different diseases, different parasites, and it's very hard to control a large group when it comes in. You try to give it the best life possible for cap yeah, for captivity. Uh, and even though a lot of them do survive, uh, you know, every once in a while, you do have to face the realities of when keeping animals, uh, you know, they pass away. All right, guys, so obviously I could get into way more detail. We can, you know, dissect everything uh, that goes on within the turtle and tortoise. But uh, this is a very generalized video. Uh, I believe I did cover some very good points, showed you guys some very good visuals. I'll include some pictures of this animal, like I said in the first clip of when it was alive. Uh, and you guys can kind of see different things. I'll also throw in some different diagrams that I'll find on Google. Uh, and if you guys want to do further research, like I said, you can go out there, buy books like the one that I just read from uh, Turtles of the World. Uh, you can also find different forums online. Reach out to me on Instagram. Reach out to other people who keep different turtles and tortoises, different reptiles in general. Uh, lots of different anatomy to discover and go out there. So uh, with that being said, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Subscribe, rate, comment, likes. And as always, if you want to see more uh, videos like this, check me out on Instagram and on TikTok at Ready Reptiles and see my fellow herpers.